Senator Butterworth, why don't you uh, tell us about Senate Bill 163. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Members of the committee. Uh, Senate Bill 163, um, and uh, I am currently speaking off LC 285563. You may have already been handed a uh, possible committee substitute for you to consider. Uh, no, I think that's getting ready to. Why don't okay. you just go ahead and start talking about the premise of your bill, Got and it. then uh, we'll uh, get the committee we'll sub out. And uh, the, the bill, just give you the brief history, unanimous out of the uh, Senate committee, um, and it was a, uh, uh, as I recall, 54 to 0 vote on the floor in the Senate. The, uh, the bill itself... That's 54 in favor, I assume. That's right. So, okay. Absolutely. Um, strongly in favor, I might add, Mr. Chairman. This bill requires a public political advertising or literature for the purpose of electing or defeating a clearly identified candidate to make certain identifications and forbids the unauthorized use of the name or imitation of the names of an existing person or organization. Violation of this code section is a misdemeanor offense. Uh, a little further, all advertising or literature must clearly state when the communication uh, has, paid, has been paid for by the candidate or campaign committee or when the communication is authorized by a candidate or campaign committee but paid for by other persons or, lastly, if the candidate does not authorize the communication, the name, permanent street address, uh, or telephone number of the person who paid for the communication and a statement that the communication is not authorized by the candidate or the candidate's campaign committee. Uh, to give you some, some history further back, uh, this, this was in the code several years ago, but uh, it, it was removed from the code uh, in 2008 because of some discussions about constitutionality and perhaps some freedom of speech infringements. Uh, I went to Legislative Council and, and got some clarifications on what those um, concerns were and we actually drafted two versions. One, one version was the prior version that was determined probably that would not have stood up to a constitutional muster. Uh, and then he also uh, prepared a bill, and this is the bill that you all have, that would stand up to a constitutional muster that addressed some of the previous concerns. So uh, this is perfecting the idea that, uh, that when uh, literature is sent out, when a TV ad, when a newspaper ad is placed about a candidate, either incumbent or just a candidate running for office, that uh, who has paid for that is uh, clearly identified so that um, anyone, anyone knows exactly who it is that, they're, that is speaking out for or against them. Um, and as public servants and elected officials, the thing that I would basically state in summary is that uh, we, we all are interested in a fair fight. And if someone wants to come have, have a, a campaign debate issue dilemma, then we ask for a level playing field and, um, and to be clearly identified. And Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, that's simply what this bill does. So we might be able to call this a transparency bill. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. Um, I understand that we have a committee sub here that is going to be offered um, with some additional language that, that you are in support of. Is, uh, as long as it does not detract from the underlying bills. My That's main, uh, with, with seven and basically now six legislative days left, Mr. Chairman, uh, my main concern is passing this bill. Uh, I am willing, if the committee is, uh, is willing, to entertain a, a committee substitute. The, um, uh, the, the cable industry has approached with an idea to create an amendment that would uh, allow public service announcements to not count against a campaign contribution limit, basically. So you go make campaign contributions, or you go make public service announcements, and those do not count uh, as public uh, as campaign contributions. Okay. Uh, Stephen Lofton is is here. He is available if the committee wants to wants to get further clarification on that committee substitute. But the thing that I would add, Mr. Chairman, is if the committee or or if the chairman is. Uh, in a quandary about the committee substitute and being handed a committee substitute here as the meeting starts, uh, my main concern is passing the bill. Sure. If, if we can accommodate uh, the request, then that's, that's the will of the committee and the will of the chairman. But my main, my main interest is, uh, is having this bill voted on, if that's your right. desire. Mr. I believe chairman. you have a question here from Representative Oliver. Representative Oliver? Senator, thank you. I really like your bill. Thank you, ma'am. 
Has the added language been introduced in the form of any bill any other time this session? No, ma'am, it has not. So we've never had a political notice of this uh, language, or we've never had a committee meeting on it in any way? As far as I know, that's a true statement. And um, mm -hmm. fair to say that if, if, if uh, I got Channel 2 to run a public service announcement against breast cancer with my face in, on it every single day, uh, because I had was a majority at stockholder in Cox communication, then um, that would be okay. Uh, that is my understanding of the verbiage. I don't know, if, Mr. Chairman, if you want to, to ask uh, Stephen Lofton to, to, to address that concern, um, but my answer to your question is that is my understanding. Yes, ma'am. We'll, uh, we'll have an opportunity in just a moment. Yes, sir. Uh, any other questions here? Representative Kidd. Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, I know years ago, um, different individuals would make a would buy a billboard for somebody or a radio ad, and uh, allegedly, not the uh, the candidate not know about it. Uh, so, what uh, in your definition, what does authorized mean? Uh, you know, do you still think someone could buy a billboard or a radio ad? in favor of somebody or opposed to somebody and never tell the candidate about it, allegedly? Well, you know, it, it depends. Authorized, I would, I would state that the authorized would be that the, the communication had been made with the candidate and the candidate had approved it. And, uh, and in that case, it would clearly state, by, with this legislation, would clearly state that it is approved by the candidate. If not, it would clearly state who the individual or the group was that was paying for that billboard. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. I guess. It, it looks like to me that there are some restrictions on, and I'm sure when Mr. Lofton comes up, he'll be able to address this, but it looks like there's some restrictions on when that is done from qualifying date and some other things. And so uh, why don't we take just a moment, and uh, Mr. Lofton, would you take the mic up there and give us a quick overview, please, and then be prepared to answer any questions? You're on. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to start off by thanking both the chairman and the sponsor of the bill for indulging us in this. This was something that, uh, that we had not planned to offer uh, this session, and I want to reiterate his point that if there's any concern among the committee members about this, we'll withdraw the sub uh, and we'll come back next year with, a, with a legislation to address this issue uh, independently. Uh, so with that off the table, all we're trying to do is uh, allow cable, television, radio, uh, any of those mediums to be able to offer a PSA, a true public information campaign, not an ad campaign, uh, not an independent expenditure campaign, no attempt to get around, uh, around those rules, and the language we believe has been uh, uh, carefully tailored to avoid just those types of situations. That's why, uh, that's why there is so much, uh, so much in the verbiage. Uh, but basically what happened was this year, as, as you all are well aware, we had a number, record number of freshmen uh, elected to the House and to the Senate. And we had some requests to, uh, to run PSAs uh, prior to or uh, either just before or during the session, uh, you know, basically stating, I'm your new state representative, here's the district that I live in, here is the, uh, uh, here's where you could reach me at the Capitol if you have an issue or a question or a concern. Uh, and, and that was it. What we got back from the lawyers was that because uh, we currently fall under the Public Service Commission's uh, uh, jurisdiction with regards to our phone service, uh, that technically that would be a, a campaign contribution, uh, which we are not allowed to give as, as uh, an industry that's regulated, uh, quote unquote, by the PSC. Um, so this was just simply an attempt to be able to run those type of public information uh, PSAs uh, either, you know, for example, announcing a town hall meeting, uh, something along those lines where a local, uh, uh, local cable company uh, could do that for their state representative or state senator and, and help get the word out. We've had requests for that type of assistance in terms of, of uh, publishing meetings, just like a newspaper can publish a meeting notice, that type of thing. We'd like to be able to publish a meeting notice with the legislator's uh, name and address uh, where the meeting's going to be. That, that type of scenario is, is what we're envisioning uh, mr chairman okay uh, representative oliver what you purchase when you purchase campaign time is name recognition the only limitation in your language here is that it, these public service 
announcements featuring the, the face and the name and the, the goodwill of Mary Margaret Oliver is simply between qualifying and the election day. I'm using myself as an example. Sure. So the other 20 months or 20 other 24 months, I, my math isn't really good here, uh, I can do a public service commission saying I'm really for good things. It's not just about my town hall meetings. It's for, I'm, I'm for good things for the county of Decay. You could do that every month, and you could do it every month for me or every week, and that purchases for me name recognition, and you want to exclude that from any kind of disclosure requirements or limitation requirements. That, that is the far end of the spectrum, I, I guess, if, if you want to look at it that way. Each, each cable company would have to uh, uh, look at, at what the requests are. But and, it's not just cable companies, decision. is it? Uh, Broadcast, radio station? Correct. Anybody, anybody. We, we, well, anyone with, with that medium, that's correct. We didn't want to exclude uh, other providers who, uh, uh, who may get similar requests. Makes me nervous. Any other questions of uh, Mr. Lofton while he's there? Okay. Here's the posture that I'm in. We have a good bill, Senate Bill 163, offers by uh, uh, Senator Butterworth, um, and I'm willing to, to move on that. I guess what I would let it up to the will of the committee, does the, anybody in the committee, does there anybody in the committee that would like to offer the committee sub that does what Mr. Lofton has just uh, said. All right, I don't hear a motion, so we'll just go ahead and offer the original Senate Bill 163, LC 371214S, SCS. What's the will of the committee? We have a motion to do pass and a second. Any discussion? Having no discussion, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we'll bring forth, thank you. Senate Bill 82. Would you sit in for me for a second? Go right ahead, I'm gonna step away. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, and we, we are working off of uh, a, a substitute uh, 285736S. Uh, the, the difference between the, the Senate version and the substitute that you see before you is uh, just two small areas of, um, uh, in, in the uh, Senate version, we had uh, accidentally struck language that we hadn't in, intended to strike. And uh, in another area, uh, there was just uh, a technical word change that we had to make, so there's nothing substantive about it. But this is our our biennial um, housekeeping bill that uh, deals with the election um, issues that were identified during the 2010 election cycle. Uh, we have met with election superintendents from around the state, uh, the legislative committees of the Voter Registrars Association of Georgia, and the Georgia Election Officials Association. Uh, this bill has their their overwhelming uh, support. It affects many areas of the election code, uh, but I will say that it, it mostly deals with the day-to-day -day workings of the uh, running of the election office and the mechanics of how the, that's, uh, those are run. It, it, I, I think it's very unlikely that a voter or a individual that is running for office will notice any of these changes. But uh, as the bill is quite lengthy, I, I'll be happy to answer any questions if there's any specific areas I'm happy to indulge. How are you done? Any questions of the committee? I, I didn't get to hear the senator talk. I just introduced Mr. Salt. He did a fantastic <laughs> job. Great introduction. How how'd you vote on House Bill eighty? Well, I have to get, I, I think we voted for it, did we? Yes we did. I think you did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Yeah. 
I think if you check the record, you'll find you didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> but, you, but you did vote for the reconsideration, so you, you, you found out later. Thank you. We, we actually like your original version of that. I, I just want to point out to see you can even vote against one of my bills and still get a hearing. So isn't that great? Just a fine chairman. I, I, I encourage not too many people to try that, though. No, just, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. You ready for that motion to the table? <laughs> yeah. Uh, any questions? Good cleanup bill, and, and I appreciate uh, Mr. O'Sullivan uh, unstriking words that he erroneously struck the last time. That's great. So appreciate uh, your help. Any questions of the author? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion to do pass. Is there a second? Second. All right. No other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say same sign. Bill passes unanimously, goes on to rules, and I am supposed to announce that uh, the author has pulled Senate Bill 160. There will be no hearing today. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.